Hello out there music collectors. Edward here back with an update of uh, vinyl, a CD, and uh, talk a little bit about a um, prog rock magazine that from time to time my wife will surprise me with a copy of. But before I begin, um, this video will be, a, will be about um, new and used records uh, one CD and at the end of the video I'd like to make a recommendation of an album that uh, of an artist that have become my favorite in the last three to four years that I'm a big fan of yesterday here we um, celebrated the 4th of July here at the house had some homemade hamburgers had some uh, drinks and just pretty much watch um, picked out a, a movie to watch that we all enjoy, took it easy. So before I begin and start um, um, showing the uh, new um, stuff that I uh, put, added to my collection here recently, I do want to give a big thank you to all the uh, subscribers to my channel. And I really do appreciate your comments and your kindness and appreciate you taking that time out to watch a uh, corny video here from uh, prog rock Tommy's corner not everything that I do show here um, is about prog rock but it is my favorite genre of music I'm into other things as well as jazz ambient classical opera I've, later years I've got into opera world music classic rock and roll blues folk and uh, my daughter, hanging out with my daughter at time to time, I do enjoy um, her K-pop music. So I do listen to that with her as well sometimes. So let me begin by showing this magazine real quick here. It's the um, Prog Rock uh, magazine and features one of my favorite bands on the cover, Pink Floyd. They have a really, really good... Uh, article about the 40 greatest prog albums in the UK or from the UK that's really good to read if you see this or anything like this and you're um, you know interested um, it's a recommendation I would say about uh, picking this magazine up I do quite enjoy the writing of it and um, I enjoy the way they do the timelines of certain albums so it's a good magazine and uh, if you have a time if you see one check it out thumb through it so it's a good magazine to pick up once in a while. I did mention that I wanted to show a, a CD, and this is a CD of uh, Nazareth, um, a band that I've uh, really uh, enjoyed to this day. And it's uh, one of those CDs uh, imports where it's two albums on one CD. Um, I first heard of Nazareth, of course, of course was... Uh, Love Hurts, their big hit that seemed to get them a lot of radio play as I was young or younger at one point. And um, this is about their first two albums, the self-titled and their second album called Exercises. I believe that's how what it is. But Nazareth, if you're not, not familiar with them, they are a Scottish rock band. Their first album came out in 71. The second album came out in 72. Here's my copy that I picked up. And um, I really, I was curious about the first two albums. So I went back and um, found this on uh, eBay and uh, added to cart and it came here. And this album, the first two albums do have uh, blues and folk rock to a lot of the songs and um, the first album is just you know straight up blues and rock and folk music it's really really good um, uh, one of the songs that I really do like on there is the song um, Morning Dew and uh, they had a hit song and I'm not sure if it was in, uh, in where they're from in Scotland or it was a UK hit but the song Dear John, which is a really good song. 
And as far as I know to this day, the band is still going. Now, their second album, Exercises, 1972, is an album that's produced by Queen's produce, producer, excuse me, Roy Thomas Baker. And um, that album has a lot of uh, acoustic and orchestra arrangements to it. It's really, really good. Not saying that the first one is bad, but I, the second one is really, a, a, I really enjoyed the album. And both albums, it seems like they expand, experiment with a lot of varieties of styles of music. So I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed both of them. So it's now part of the collection. So let me begin with the vinyl uh, records that I uh, picked up here recently. Um, first that I want to show and talk a little bit about is uh, the second uh, solo album with Tony Banks, keyboardist for Genesis, The Fugitive. I'm um, listening to this again the other day. I really, really do like this second solo album. He had a first album, um, I believe it's called Curious Feeling, and that's really good. I, if I remember right, it's instrumental. I don't have it or own it anymore, but hopefully I'll come across it. It does feature the uh, few tracks feature Steve Gadd, G-A-D-D, -D, uh, drumming on this. And this album is um, where he sings all the songs to. It has styles of art rock pop and some prog to it and um, he keeps his vocal lines or lyrics or lines how he sings are uh, straightforward and it is produced by banks and also the two songs that really that really stick out to me are the couple of, there's a couple of instrumentals on there but the first song this is love has a a reggae feel to it so it's really, really a good song, and I really enjoy the song, which sounds like a Genesis track to me, but it's the song called And the Wheels Keep Turning. So The Fugitive, Tony Banks, I really did enjoy uh, the album a lot. This another album that I picked up, I thought I had this in a collection, but I didn't. I found uh, one of my favorite bands, The Moody Blues, The Other Side of Life, which is an album that came out in 1986. It's the band's 20th album. It had two big hits. It got a lot of radio airplay, Your Wildest Dreams, and uh, The Other Side of Life. In fact, there's videos of those that they made. And it's, their, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned, it's their 20th studio album. That's the album that I did see them on tour. Great show. I really love every song that they played. I don't remember the encore, but I did get to see the keyboardist at the time, uh, Patrick Morantz, who also plays on Yes's album, Relayer. Such a great show. He is an amazing keyboardist to watch. I believe I was anywhere between the uh, sixth and the tenth row. I don't remember, but I had a good view of the band front stage and it was just a great concert they're a really great band to watch live now um reach down here um this one here is a i picked up cheap trick i found a copy of the doctor uh, don't know what pressing this is but it is an import um it's just straightforward you know cheap trick um power pop hard rocking album I really like Side 2 a lot. It was a side that I was playing the most of. And um, the song I really did like that I thought was a really good song is called It's Only Love. So um, I do like the artwork on that cover. Then I found me another Cheap Trick album that I picked up. It's an upgrade copy of the famous Cheap Trick at Budokan. It came with a booklet. Gatefold. So was happy that one of my local record stores that I live so close to that I could walk to it, which is nice, um, posted that and uh, asked about it. And they were telling me how clean and a good copy it was and it had the booklet. So I picked that up. 
This next album is a reissue that I got. Is um, I believe it's my first Lou Reed album. Um, I've had his music, but it was like the CDs, and I don't think I own those anymore. I don't remember what happened to him. A lot of stuff when you start moving in life, you either you give it away or sometimes it grows legs and walks off. I, I don't know. But anyway, I picked up Lou Reed. Uh, it's a reissue, Rock and Roll Animal. It's a gatefold. Really nice. Haven't played this yet. But looking forward to. I understand that the sticker said something about that he supervised all the uh, mastering on it. So I'm sure it's going to be great. It's on RCA Records. Next one is a, a band that I've talked about. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about this album in a later video. Or about the band more. But I've been enjoying this band. Um, bang. And the album is called Mother Slash Bow to the King. They're a band from Pennsylvania, hard rock, um, psych rock. A little bit, com they've been compared to like Black Sabbath. It's on the Savant label. And um, the other day I was looking at this again. Uh, it's on a limited orange vinyl. I have not opened it yet, but I will plan to listen to this this week. Maybe a... Uh, Talk a little bit more about this album. But that is Bang. The next album I want to show here is one of an, uh, is a favorite artist of mine. Clout Schultz from Tangerine Dream. This is his album Moondawn. It's a really nice copy. Love uh, the gatefold. Love this photo in the background. It's on Brain Records. And it is, uh, don't, don't remember the year that this album came out in. But, um, okay. So apparently, I think this album came out in 1976. He was a member of Tangerine Dream, Moondawn. Um, really such a good album. I love this. Um, I want to read this. I love this. What it says in here, a quote, it says, this recording opened another door I wanted to go through since years, through since years, the rock music. Now it's done and I can go on to open another door. I would agree with that because that's how it was when ever I kept, um, as I was growing into listening to prog rock, I opened other doors and started to pick up other types of uh, experimental ambient records, progressive jazz, and vanguard records. So I'd agree with that statement. My music journey. Oh, it is on Brain Records. I don't know if I mentioned that. Now I'm going to come up to the part of the um, recommendation and uh, featured uh, a featured album. And this is a reissue. Uh, it's on Superior Viaduct Records, and they do a good job, in my opinion, the way they reissue and the way these records sound. This is Richard Pinhas. Pinhas. It's the album Iceland. It's a gatefold. They do a nice job. And. Um, this album is his uh, 1979 third solo album. He's from a band that I first heard about through a friend, Heldon. And when Heldon broke up, you know, he veered off into his own music journey. And this is, uh, like I said, his third solo album. Uh, electronic slash progressive rock is one way of describing this. Um... I've read or where he it's like a journey through Iceland the music um, it has delayed ridden electric guitar pulsating machinery rhythms and chilling ambience I would agree with that I recommend this album I think if you're a fan of Cluster and Robert Flip, Fripp excuse me 
and Brian Eno, I would say this is a great recommendation for me. You check it out. Um, I will leave a link in the description where you can hear uh, some music from this album. But there it is, folks. Richard Pinas. Pin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. This is Iceland. And it is one of my favorites. And I wanted to make this recommendation. Well, that's it for this uh, vinyl update. I want to thank y'all for watching. Everyone take care out there. And I will see you on my next video.